currently to the heartbreak of Saginaw Valley. They are down 1-0 to Grand Valley. Grand Valley up 1-0. Oh, and it was all because of a controversial uh, timeout call right at the end. Saginaw Valley had two players up ready to go. Uh, a timeout was called right before a throw was made to win the point. But it had to be recalled, and it was uh, it just didn't work out in the favor. Eventually, Grand Valley got a catch. And then it be, uh, became a two versus one for Grand Valley, and that was all she wrote. Um, so Saginaw Valley really needs to get this next point because it's still 1-0. They still have plenty of time to get a point, tie it up with Grand Valley. Um, we're hoping, we're praying that we might see a non-Michigan team in the finals. I think we might actually get that. It looks like JMU is doing really well on the other side. Number seven for Grand Valley already going down, so S uh, SV is uh, got a one-man advantage so far. Actually, looks like a two-man advantage. So, 13 to 15 currently. Alex is back with me. Yeah. So Saginaw Valley, a couple of their players. Uh, I mean, they've reached that point where their bodies just cannot give anymore. The guy that I just talked to, the muscles in his arm were so tense that his arm felt like, I mean, it felt like it was made out of wood. There was just no give to it. And, I, and the muscles in his arm were tensed up so much that it was, uh, he, he was having some numbness in his fingers. So that's someone that's done so many grippy throws, made, you know, snapped their arm back and forward, uh, that his arm was just gone, so. Yeah, um, I mean, even professional baseball players who are making throws, uh, get some time off. These people do not. Uh, and I think we had a little update for uh, for you. It's still 1-0 uh, JMU. What, what's the man and uh, I can't see the man I do know that JMU is down this point. Uh, it's very clear to me. I mean, I'm, I'm counting at least 10 uh, Central Michigan players off to my right and only one, two. Looks like three JMU. It, it does look like their Central Michigan is going to be able to tie it up. Yeah, that's fine. You can switch. Whoop. That way, Alex can see. Heads up. We've been really lucky. We haven't actually had anybody get uh, hit up into the rafters. Uh, though we've gotten a few close calls. Say that. <laughs> still plenty of time for that to happen. Well, these people throw hard enough to where if it ricochets off a ball, it will go that high. Wow. Number 32, Mandic, is he? Okay, they're calling him out. Uh, that, I, was pretty I thought, pretty yeah, that, I was going to say that too. So we have, um, I believe, Grand Valley down three and Saginaw Valley down two. So these, this right side, they're jockeying for position here, that's for sure. And Grand Valley is, is just having a one-man blocking squad on number four, their captain, now, I don't able know, to cover I don't know three. I noticed when that last point, or when the, when the half was over for this game, uh, I thought players from both teams were running over to get drinks of water. But both teams just sprinted over to the net and started watching the JMU-CMU game because they're not going to have a chance to see either of those two teams play again before the final game. So any kind of intel they can get, now's the time to do it. I actually see a couple of Grand Valley or Saginaw Valley alternates up in the rafters kind of watching uh, watching that other game, maybe trying to look for some pointers to be used for the final. Number 68 Fitzgerald's going to cover that right side. Definitely gets up in their face, Grand Valley. Ooh! Central Michigan does oh, take the second point. One all on the other final four game. 1-1. One, one. That's big. And with only 13 minutes left, it's very possible we could see that game going to overtime. Yeah, that's that's very likely considering these points. I mean, it's 1-1 one, one and Grand Valley is up 1-0. When now, teams are this good. Remind, okay, let, go ahead and remind people what happens in the situation now with overtime. I believe you choose your six best players. And how many balls are there? Still ten balls. So, so still, still ten balls, but it's six versus six in a tiebreaker. This, when teams are this good, the number of points that are played are so low because the blocking is just so incredible, and catches are so much more common, even with these players throwing upwards of seventy or eighty miles an hour. So we're watching Grand Valley pushing up into the neutral zone, keeping it. Third point getting ready to start off to my right in the second Final Four game. Grand Valley pushing up onto the right side, that's for sure. One of the judges gets a, gets a shot to the side. 
always a fun experience being a judge or a referee because you're going to get hit, that's for sure, especially on those crosses that nobody can see. Looks like we have a catch for Grand Valley. Grand Valley is really looking strong at this point. A lot of black jerseys still alive. Um, red thinning out. We got three, six, nine, about 12 left. You know, not as bad as I originally had anticipated, but blocking is just is just so good. We have a, I think we have a foot violation from number 17. I think he went past the, the white line that they're not allowed to go. That's, uh, that's an unfortunate way to get out. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, you can reach over that white line, but no part of your body can go over. Can no, touch no over. Nobody can touch over. Because you'll see players from time to time reach over that line to grab a ball. But uh, if any part of you, clothing, finger, foot, toe, anything, touches over that line, that's out of bounds and you're out. By God, number four has got a hard throw. Everybody just... Cowers. Number, number four, that's the survivor from that. That is the point. that's Bailey. In for ages, Bailey. Fitzgerald is gone 68. One of their best players from Saginaw. Yeah, Saginaw Valley definitely starting to show some emotion. Uh, every time one of them gets hit, you can tell the whole the whole team kind of collectively sighs and shakes their head. Yep. Grand Valley did not seem invincible this tournament, but is looking darn near flawless in this semifinal matchup. Hitting number 55 both in the head and the foot for good measure. Yeah, and I mean, that just shows, again, Grand Valley, I'm not hearing as much. They're not really communicating the targets they're throwing at. It's almost like they're doing it telepathically. They seem to know who they need to throw at. I very rarely see uh, a player from Saginaw Valley that only has one ball going at them at a time. You got to remember, these play ball, these teams play each other so often. Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, it's been a long day. Uh, they play each other so often, they know exactly who they need to aim for. They don't need to call numbers. They see faces and they go, that guy's got to go. 36 for Grand Valley trying to drop down to get out of the way of a throw, but the throw is just a fake, so it was a very easy out after that. Pump fakes, one of the best moves in college dodgeball. Heck, dodgeball in general. Number 37 for Saginaw, Gravetti, moving up by himself on the right-hand side. The vast majority of Saginaw's players coming up on the left. I'm seeing a couple Saginaw players. Uh, they're looking at their fingers. Ooh, no, 81. I really think that hits you, but okay. But yeah, I see a lot of uh, Saginaw Valley players looking at their fingers in between throws. I think it's really starting to wear on them. Yeah, I mean, you, uh, you can't, probably can't see it on the broadcast. We can see it up from up here. Uh, the courts are just littered with little pieces of finger tape that people lose. I mean, uh, there's a lot of people where they'll go out of the game and they'll come right back in, or they'll go out of the game, retape their fingers, come back in, and that tape will come off. So, uh, I mean, the wear and tear on their fingers is just unbelievable. I'm surprised any of the glass that's off to our left hasn't been shattered yet. That stuff is practically unbreakable glass. I'm pretty happy that no glass has been broken this day. <laughs> nice, nice redaction there. <laughs> Sorry. Seems pretty even off to my right with the second game. minutes left in the JMU Central Michigan game. Uh, I can't, it looks like both teams. About even. Seven minutes left, looks like even, man, even number of players on the field. I'd say it's pretty likely that that game's going to go in overtime. Yep. Both teams just jockeying for uh, for position here. Saginaw Valley still with th three, six, seven players. Grand Valley with three, six, nine, ten players. So Grand Valley has a sizable advantage currently. Yeah, I think there's a couple people saying that uh, the video is dropping out from them. We're still broadcasting. Uh, that's just kind of how this live stream thing works. Every now and then if the video drops out, just reload and bring it back up, and that usually works. Uh, we're, we'll keep track of it from our end, but we're still broadcasting. All right, controversial call here for Grand Valley on Saginaw. Looks like one of the uh, Saginaw players did get hit, so he's, he's, he's being honest about it. He got out. Another one down, though. Now they're down to five, so we have a 10-second shot clock on Saginaw Valley. Looks like 10 or I've got 11 players still in for Grand Valley.
get a quick shot of Saginaw here. JMU getting really pumped up. I'm yeah, not sure exactly what's going on. Heard, I think JMU had like a three or four player swing right there. Combination of hits and catches maybe. What a catch from number wow. three. The tip of his fingers. Whoa. And then oh another catch from number four, Bailey. Grand Valley taking captain, absolute captain control. For Grand Valley, number four, Bailey. We got a chance to talk to him for a minute. Uh, I mean, we've seen him multiple times this game. He is solely responsible for Grand Valley's first point during that first half, and he's still putting putting out an amazing game. Oh, number 80, Miller. A lot of power behind that throw. Bailey doing a pump fake. Miller, nothing, uh, not too difficult. Oh, no. Miller gets caught. Miller caught, so I'm going to, okay. Oh, okay. oh, he steps Miller out of bounds. Very, Ooh. Very good. So Saginaw Valley's final player decided to run out of bounds. That gives us 14, 14 minutes, 48 seconds left to play. Grand Valley up two points. So Saginaw Valley, you have to find a really quick way to make up two points here. Yeah, that's just not going to happen. All right, and let's see. Checking in over here. Timeout. Yeah, timeout, CMU. All right, JMU, according to our, uh, our in-the-field broadcaster, Jazzy Josh Raymer, <laughs> JMU dominating the current point. So we'll take a quick break. We'll be